very very important point this is the slit lamp picture showing the same the importance of slit lamp is that it gives an optical section it's like someone has cut the lens has put it sideways okay so without having actually taking the lens out and cutting the slit lamp is going to facilitate the view easily so, so this is going to be the cornea this is going to be the lens so in between the cornea and between the lens is going to be the anterior chamber okay so this is a important point given your textbooks so please remember this nobody is going to use this from a clinical perspective but for exams perspective when they ask a question on slit lamp very important question please please make sure you draw this anatomy of the lens as seen on slit lamp so slit lamp anatomy is going to be very very simple you have ca it's the capsule the cortex are going to be divided into five zones superficial and deep the superficial ones are c1 alpha c1 beta c2 the deep ones are c3 and c4 still deeper to that is going to be your nucleus so please remember this it's basically self explanatory there's nothing logical or nothing conceptual about this let's moving on to the biochemistry the most dreaded part is going to be the biochemical composition of the lens i know we all would have forgotten biochemistry from our mbbs days so let's refresh the relevant biochemistry it's going to be very easy please follow with me as far as the composition of the lens is concerned the most important or the most predominant composition is going to be water 66% of water not 99% 66% which means there is a relative dehydration of the lens so for a lens to be clear there has to be this relative dehydration of the lens protein is going to be 33 percentage another very important so together water and proteins are going to form the 99 percentage so the most predominant composition is going to be or the ingredients are going to be water and the proteins apart from that you have the carbohydrates lipids electrolytes and other compounds such as glutathione organic phosphates and ascorbic acid the most important concept is to understand is lens proteins why because lens proteins are going to be of two types you can water insoluble and water soluble water soluble proteins are what you call as a crystallins they are of three types alpha beta and gamma crystallins these are water soluble the water insoluble can again be classified into urea soluble urea insoluble the urea soluble proteins are going to be cytoskeletal proteins whereas the urea insoluble proteins are going to be the cell membrane proteins of which a very important thing to consider is going to be the major intrinsic protein what he call as the aquaporin o or aquaporin 0 so this water insoluble is going to be either urea soluble or urea insoluble the water soluble ones are going to be alpha beta gamma what we together call as the crystallins of which the largest compound or the largest crystalline is going to be the alpha crystalline alpha are the the most predominant ones they are more dominant people so alpha crystalline is going to be the largest crystalline this alpha is going to be 600 to 800 kilo dalton that so so that is going to be the weight of the alpha crystalline more important thing to consider is that this alpha crystalline is going to prevent denaturation prevent denaturation see when the proteins are going to be denaturated what happens they become precipitated they're going to form like a clump so when there's going to be precipitation of proteins as a result of denaturation there is going to be loss of transparency that is why why you have cataract when the lens proteins there's going to be more of water insoluble proteins but one when there is more of water insoluble proteins and when there's going to be more of disulfide bond which occurs in the between the water soluble and the water insoluble so more of disulfide bonds less of glutathione so these three important conditions water insoluble proteins are going to be more the disulfide bonds in the proteins are going to be more glutathione is going to be less because of these three reasons there's going to be protein precipitation as a result of denaturation leading on to cataract please don't forget this a very important thing to consider why do you have cataract it's because when the proteins are going to get precipitated 